M14. The M14 rifle, or as it's called in its civilian terms for the semi-automatic only version like this, the M1A1. Uh, that was the designation that Springfield Armory gave to it and uh, manufactured and retailed these for a while. <clears throat> you could still get these. There's several different companies that will build you uh, a rifle. Uh, Springfield Armory still sells them. Uh, they have different variations. Usually now they come with 16 and 18 inch barrels, stainless steel heavy grade barrels and that. And they modernized and updated it in different versions. But this is basically the issue gun. I think it's got a 24 inch barrel. And uh, with the flash suppressor, bayonet lug, and everything. And what this rifle was, is back in the 80s, the Chinese made a knockoff of this gun that they used to distribute to, you know, create havoc. Well, a bunch of these came into the United States, and they were M14s. They were just a Chinese copy of it. Well, they went, and by the regulation, they cut up the receivers, and somebody went and built a bunch of rifles from these parts kits. They built a bunch of these guns and originally that's what this was. I forget it was about five hundred dollars or a little less I paid for this thing and it was a Chinese parts kit. <clears throat> and uh, actually I ended up rebuilding the whole gun. The thing about it is this the parts kit was built on an Arms Corps National Match receiver. And the dealer I bought it from kind of recognized they must have run out of receivers and used the National Match ones. And he went and bought all the rifles that were built on a National Match that he could find. I think he said he got three or four of them. So I bought the rifle from him. <clears throat> and the original stock was, was horrible. It was real rough. And that, this is an old used M14 stock I got somewhere. Um, and put on there. I think I even replaced the handguard too because the Chinese one was crappy. But I ended up, I shot it. I had trouble with it and they said that the, the bolt and material was soft so I got headspace gauges and it kind of headspace long. So I went and bought a GI bolt back when you know finding the parts was easy so I swapped out the bolt and it wouldn't quite close. And it was a chrome line chamber on that Chinese barrel so I kind of stoned the bolt and would fire it, and it head spaced, I fired it uh, a little bit, and then I noticed the head space started growing. So something was amiss, okay, the, the parts in those guns were not heat treated right. So at the time, Fulton Armory was um, 
was the uh, company that did a lot of the building of the, uh, they'd either rebuild your Durand or build you a national match M14 or M1A1. So I sent it out to Fulton Armory and they, uh, I had a, I forget the brand of the barrel, but I got a medium weight match grade barrel on it, married up to the national match receiver. I left the sights alone. I didn't put national match sights on there. Uh, I got a GI stock and handguard and some 20 round magazines that somehow ended up in the bottom of my sea bag when I left the Navy. And uh, that's that. I believe the flash suppressor and all that other stuff is uh, the Chinese bit of it. So, had it rebuilt and it's pretty accurate. And I just took it out the other day. I thought I'd have a uh, video discuss it a little. And um, I took it out and shot it. So, there'll be some clips of me shooting it and I'll show you the results. Um, the ammunition I used um, when I shot this. The ammo I used uh, when I shot this, I reloaded some, uh, I had some Remington bronze point bullets, like a box and a half of them. So I loaded up on uh, U.S. military brass, uh, these 150 grain bullets, and they sat around. I shot some of them and the rest of them sat for like 25 years, so I decided to get use them up. And also, back in the late 80s, early 90s, PPU... Uh, back in the communist days, used to market ammunition under, I think, the name the Hansen Cartridge Company. And some of this stuff uh, was made there in Yugoslavia, but this here, the 308, is Israeli military industry 308. Uh, IMI. And I, it's the 150 grainer. Full metal jacket. Okay, there we go. Yep, 150 grain full military jacket. Standard uh, round, military round. Um, so we, uh, I shot offhand with my reloads, and you'll see in the rest of the video. Um, then I shot off the bench with this just to, to check it out. And the point of impact was different on the two cartridges, but after I just made a slight adjustment, I got on the bolt. Now I'll take a little look at a closer look at the gun. Okay, we had to reposition things so the lighting was better. But here's a close-up of it. Like I said, I just got a used sanded stock, which is pretty good. It's solid wood. It's better than a Chinese one. But the only thing is you can get little plugs for this. This is where the full auto knob and stuff went, uh, which is not present. None of the parts were present whatsoever. And there's your action, which is basically a modified grand action. They come down with a, a piston, uh, and you got a short stroke piston that moves your op handle on it, operating handle or rod. You got your flash suppressor bayonet mount. I can't remember if I had a bayonet or not for this one. And then this here, the screw, is your gas cutoff. When you're launching blanks uh, off of that, I think that also doubles as a uh, grenade launcher. They were doing that back then. They put these large flash suppressors on there uh, that would double as a grenade launcher. Or I think you might have had to get one. I can't remember. But that's what this is. If you got it up and down, it means the gas will flow and hit the piston. Take a screwdriver or a cartridge rim and turn that, then it cuts off the gas, and it's just a single shot. We used them in the Navy as line throwing guns. They put this uh, like device on there, it resembles a grenade launcher, and it threw this big rubber ball-like thing over to the supply ship when we are underway with a spool of pretty good nylon twine on there, and then that's how they pull the rope over from the supply ship and we get fuel or cargo that way. And I think the Navy still does use these. They have a few on the ships as line throwing guns. That's about the only modification. Uh, when I was in the service we had uh, an armory full of them. We didn't have uh, M16s like they do now. 
and we had these. Now I'll open the action up and we'll take another look at it. This rifle has a 20 round detachable box magazine that kind of rocks in and clamps. But if you notice also they have stripper clip guides. I guess the idea was you know, them canvas pouches I got they hold two mags so you'd have a mag and a gun and four extra magazines on your belt as a standard load I guess. But I think a lot of the pictures you'll see soldiers wearing these cloth bandoliers and on there would be 10 round stripper clips that you would put in here and charge the rifle with stripper clips without taking a magazine out. That's pretty stiff down in there. Yeah, it looks like you need an anti-tilt floor plate. But that's basically it. It's a smooth shooting gun. I really like it. Uh, this or the M1 Garand are nice rifles. Uh, this was the rifle I used when I was in the service. Um, and it has that little metal plate there on the back. Now what that was used for is if you had a bipod on this or were using it in fully auto, you kind of use it like the BAR where you'd steady the barrel and that up front and then you would put your left hand and put pressure down on this to hold it steady reach up over on you and use this plate when you fired the gun at full auto so it wouldn't come off your shoulder I believe don't know uh, I kept it on there never used it never shot it in full auto but neat little gun just something my head lying around uh, just doing a quick video about it and now we'll go on to where I go and shoot it a bit and then we'll and I'll also show you the results with the targets that is the truth I'm going to try one of them 300's with that same Okay, offhand at 100 yards. Not too bad. Old reloads, couple low. I was lucky to hit anything, but right on the money. I guess that still qualifies. Now this is off the bench, same ammunition. For some odd reason, I was right on offhand, and I shot the first group very low. So then I. Tried to adjust the sight picture, got to the bottom, ended up doing a couple clicks on the rear sight with the reloads, and then hammered them in. They're, they're over 30 years old, and some of them weren't functioning quite well, but still, very accurate rifle, real good. Got some old Israeli military industry ammo. Had to readjust the rear sight, two clicks down because it was shooting quite high as compared to the reloads. But then once we bumped the sights down a couple clicks, we got into where we were shooting right on the money. 